This video is sponsored by Mark 7 Car Wash Equipment, providing clean, dry, shiny cars for over 50 years. Visit mark7.net for more information. Hello and welcome to Unscripted, the video series that connects you with market leaders. Today on our Unscripted video, we're happy to welcome Steve Samudio, Technical Sales Manager for PureClean. Hello, Steve, and thank you for joining us today. How you doing, Rich? Thank you very much for uh, having me on this. Um, looking very forward to it. And uh, again, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> sure. So uh, today's topic, Steve, is on uh, water recycling at a car wash. And, uh, and we know, Steve, uh, we often write it in the publication that no two car washes are exactly alike. So what about water recycling systems? Are these one size fits all solutions? And why or why not? Um, you know, I would have to say no. Um, we're, we're pretty close um, with the in-bay uh, automatics or rollovers, um, typically because they use a single pump and they're pretty close to the, uh, I'll call it a 30 gallon per minute demand. Um, most of those are pretty cookie cutter, but uh, I, do, I would say it's not a one size fits all. <clears throat> okay. And, uh, and what factors go into the, uh, to the size and type and setup requirements for car washes? And if you can, Steve, uh, can you give us a, a cost range uh, for these systems? Yeah, um, so some of the factors that go into play, um, whether you're using a batch type system or on demand, um, really comes down to how many gallons of water you're gonna require per car and or through the day. Um, with a batch system, you're kind of looking at, I need to hold so many good or, you know, gallons that I've produced in order to maintain that level um, through the day. And then other systems that are more on demand, um, that's typically looked at at the maximum amount of gallons you're going to use. Uh, for example, if you have a tunnel set up, uh, you may have some high pressure blasting and feeding um, some of the curtains and emitters. Um, we're going to calculate all of that up and try to figure out, all right, you need a demand of 75 gallons. So um, sizing into that uh, really does take a role on, you know, what is being used in the wash for re reclaim. And uh, again, how many gallons you're going to require per car. <clears throat> um, for the price ranges, uh, typically see probably about an average around 25 to 30 K. Um, I, I think you can get into the reclaim side of it with a, uh, a very cheap and small model towards the, I don't know, $10,000 range. And of course, you can, with the higher volume, uh, bigger pumps, bigger, you know, more, more to the system, um, you can easily reach up to 50, 75K. Okay. And I know the, uh, the savings for that investment will also uh, vary from car wash to car wash and application to application, uh, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So when, uh, when installing and maintaining a water recycling system over the long haul, uh, what seasonal considerations should operators have? So uh, probably one of the bigger ones that comes up is uh, specifically like the Northeast or uh, where they salt roads. Um, that salt is a contaminant with reclaimed water. Um, so there's consideration, and this is more on the maintenance side, but uh, the consideration of um, the salt getting in the water along with even mud or weather where you have, uh, I don't know, I'll just say Oklahoma or something. You have a bunch of four by four trucks coming off the roads and there's a lot more mud, um, maybe specifically in the winter, it's getting tacky. Um, those are some considerations to think about. There, there are options that people do as far as even putting it in a mud pit, um, or even with the salt going back with that and maintaining it more often, cleaning out the water. Um, heat is also another consideration. Uh, some areas that are, let's say the, the Northern states here, um, they have cooler temperatures in the summer compared to let's say Arizona or Southern Texas. Um, heat can play a big factor with bacterial growth. So uh, those are things to consider as far as odor and bacteria um, taking care of those issues. So when you're looking at a system, you may consider that, you know, I'm in a very hot area. I may need more um, chemical or ozone or something that, that's 
going to take care of the water to um, clean it up. <clears throat> okay, good point. So um, I, I know water quality uh, changes uh, even from day to day, week to week, uh, month to month. So how often should an operator perform a water quality uh, test? And should a lab always be used or is field uh, testing sufficient? I, I think field, uh, field testing is sufficient. Um, I, I think once you get into mm, some real problem areas that then yes, you'll probably want to take a sample and get uh, a full blown uh, water test from that. Some of the criteria could be even with uh, a municipality, if they have an issue with a BOD or COD count um, or limit to that. Um, most of the time, field testing is not sufficient for that. So that's where I would say, okay, we need to take a sample. Let's go to get that tested at the lab. Um, I, as far as testing, I think once a month would be good, um, but I think once a quarter would be sufficient as well. Um, as long as it's maintained, uh, I don't really see a whole lot of issues. The biggest issue maybe that we see is um, a pH level change. And of course that would usually change with more than likely chemistry changing. Um, the pH can drastically change what kind of bacteria you grow and whether it's the stinky stuff or just kind of, you know, friendly green moss or whatever you want to call it hanging around. So um, it's not a bad idea to test it. I would, you know, on a regiment, sure, you're already doing PMs in the car washes, might as well take a sample and I would look at your pH level, make sure it's maintained. Um, and then um, it, for the Northeast or uh, places where they're salting the roads, I would uh, also consider a salinity meter and just check your, your salt levels during the winter months. Um, there's a certain level you'll get to where you see that the cars are not quite as clean and it's probably site to site that that level or number needs to be based off of. But uh, once you reach that point, if you're checking that monthly, then you can decide, okay, it's time for me to pump out the tanks or uh, clean up that salt. Okay, good to know. So um, Steve, what, uh, what have you noticed as the, uh, the most common mistakes or, or pitfalls or points of failure that uh, that operators have when installing and maintaining a water recycling system and how can our uh, viewers here today avoid these uh, these pitfalls so one of the biggest challenges um, that I think many uh, OEMs face is the construction phase um, it, it's important that you know I would say, 80 to 90% of the business probably has underground tanking for these reclaim systems. Um, and it's very important and viable for the plumbing between the tanking and the reclaim system to be uh, exactly what you need. Um, you don't want to uh, dig twice. Uh, that's you know not cost effective. So in the planning stages and in, in installing, um, I think that needs to be checked. And I think it should be um, you know, you should call your uh, distributor or manufacturer and find out what they recommend and what they need for their system. <clears throat> um, depending on the system, even the tanking itself, um, there's probably a minimum requirement that most companies have as far as gallons that they need. So if you're under that or even possibly over it, um, that could be challenging later to try to maintain that water uh, at a quality level. You know, once it's installed, um, you should be pretty much up and running, good to go. But uh, maintenance is a huge factor. Um, whether it's a, a bag filter or, or things you need to maintain daily, um, or even just checking to make sure the system is on, or say it's odor treatment is working properly. Um, reclaim water is pretty uh, particular and it can foul very quickly. So if it's not maintained on a daily basis or at least monthly with PMs, um, you can see some pretty big pitfalls with that. Okay, and obviously a visual inspection. Water uh, is so important to chemical application and, and the final results of a, of a car wash. So obviously operators should, uh, should monitor wash results uh, throughout the day and, uh, and certainly mm -hmm. they can see some uh, some points of failure, let's say there. So, uh, 
Steve, obviously, uh, water recycling is a very important uh, topic for, for a lot of reasons. So we, we thank you for taking uh, a few minutes here and, and helping us uh, understand some of these, uh, these differences. So uh, thank you again for doing this interview with uh, carwash.com. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you, Rich.